imagine being the most feared pirates on the seven seas until one day it all went wrong. Captured by the dread pirate Agmir and his crew, you're forced to give up your riches and your freedom. Can we escape his prison and steal back our treasure while surviving the menaces out at sea? Stay tuned to find out. Looks like we couldn't evade him forever. Yeah, I guess we better get comfy. How do they expect us to live like this? I mean, we're stacked on top of each other. And look at this, this thing probably doesn't even work. Wait, what the? Guilty, come look at this. Wait, someone left us a key? There's a book in here. Maybe someone left this for us. Traveler, ahoy matey. I hope this key serves you well. I was never able to use it in here. These pesky guards- Dude, the guard can come back at any second. Let's get the heck out of here. And Guilty was absolutely right. That guard could come back at any time. So we made our great escape. Going up the stairs and out the building, there was actually a creeper waiting for us. I had to punch it away. Then we ran through the thick jungle on the path to try and escape. From there, we crossed a rickety wood bridge trying to get off of this prisoner's island. And the guard was chasing us in the process. However, once we were there, I was attacked by a crab. It chased me the entire way through the pirate's camp while just trying to escape. We climbed ladders hoping that no guards would see us. Once we made it over the hill, we saw a little bridge that we could walk on. From there, it was time to escape. I saw that there were two wood docks, unguarded, with rafts on either end. I headed left and Guilty went right and we jumped off. But just before we got in the clear, Guilty was attacked by a pirate with a gun. Thankfully, the rafts are faster than he can swim. After that, we made it out of the cove and headed deep into the ocean, trying to find any land for ourselves. The journey was tough and days seemed like years. Eventually, from behind me, I heard, Land ho! and we had finally found an island that we could survive on for these next 100 days. Upon landing on this deserted island, we found a campsite that could have been once in use. There, we found two leather helmets, some carrots, and some saplings. After that, we started getting our basic weaponry. We cut down the jungle logs and made wood and stone tools. From there, we mined the island a little bit more, gathering coal, stone, and iron. After the sun was setting, we decided to take down the campsite and use that wool for beds. Let's hope we get a good night's sleep, because I have a feeling tomorrow's gonna be rough. Oh boy, I was right. All right, let's rewind a little bit. Day four started off pretty normal. We mined the cobwebs that were on the campsite from years past and used that to make a fishing rod. From there, we were able to get food and gear. I gave Guilty the charge of fishing while I went and broke leaves and grabbed all of the wood. We wanted to make sure we could grab every single sapling available on this island so we never run out of building resources. At one point, I fought a creeper and won. I didn't blow up. That was cool. Then once I was done mining a tree, I was attacked through the ground by a shark. And this was absolutely terrifying because it gave me a bleed effect, which means I'm pretty much about to die. Thankfully, I watched the bleed effect tick me down to half a heart, but I survived. Let's just hope I don't run into Bruce again. From there, we now knew that the island was being surveyed by sharks. To counter the insane bite these sharks have, we had to get food, and that was Guilty's job while fishing. Mine was to go back to tree cutting, because you know what? In a tree, a shark's not going to get me, unless it has wings or is in a tornado. Wait, Sharknado's a thing, right? Anyway, once the day was finished, Guilty had caught enough fish to combine with our leather helmets to make us novice captain's hats. At this point, even without our loot and our ship, we still felt like pirates again. Before we get too far into this video, a big thanks to Monster Legends for sponsoring. Monster Legends is an awesome free-to-play RPG mobile game that will put your strategy skills to the test. There are over 900 monsters to collect, plus they are coming out with brand new monsters every single week. You can also pick one of your monsters to breed with a different element and be rewarded with new rarities while creating new species. And don't miss the chance to obtain the incredible monsters available only in the game's limited time events. You can also boost your monster's level and power with runes, relics, and talents to gain advantage in battles ahead. Create your unique team of monsters and put your strategy skills to the test in the ultimate challenge, battling with other monster masters in real time, live duels, or in multiplayer modes where you can conquer over all of the competition. Win trophies and rewards showing your mastery for a chance to reach the top leagues amongst fellow monster masters. If you download Monster Legends right now using my link down below in the description or the QR code on screen, you will get 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kaori. Remember, this is only a limited time offer, so make sure to go download the game now and not miss out on these amazing rewards. Thank you to Monster Legends for sponsoring this video, and let's get right back into the action. The next day, the shark got really on our nerve. Guilty had actually fished up a power three bow and I tried to use it to kill the shark and it didn't take. Bruce was a much stronger being than I thought, which means we now have to survive side by side with a gigantic shark. Knowing that fact, Guilty and I actually went underground. We started searching the islands for coal, iron, anything we could find down here. 
At one point, I even stumbled into an underwater ravine where I crafted doors and went along getting as much iron as I could. I was praying that there was not going to be a shark that was down here. That would have been absolutely terrifying. Once I had stripped the ravine for all the iron it offered, I went back up. It was nighttime, so I put all my stuff away and went to sleep. After that, we were pretty much running low on absolutely all types of food. And even though we were being constantly surveyed by a shark, I figured it would be the smart call to grab a shield and jump in the water. I was absolutely terrified being in this water, but I was able to gather a ton of kelp. See, if you smelt kelp, then you actually get dried kelp, which you can eat. It's not very, well, good, but you know what? It's food. Then after that, I started clearing out an area for a house. We pirates need a place to stay if we're going to survive the next 100 days and get all of our loot back. You know what else we pirates need? For you to hit that like button down below as well as subscribe to the channel to help me out on the journey. It's greatly appreciated and worth the interruption. N no? Uh, okay, back to the video. The first design for the house was a bit of a stretch. I tried adding a balcony to a circular area and I just kind of really hated this thing. I eventually took this down and started fresh the next day. While failing to build this house throughout the next few days, I actually ran out of wood. Like, the house looks okay here, like, we have some foundation done, but I am completely out of jungle wood. And the worst part is, is we have either one sapling or, or no saplings, and, and that's not very good for us. Which means for the last few days when I've been losing wood in the ocean because I've been messing up the house, or we've been using it to build more tools while Guilty's been mining, um, none of the trees have been growing, and if they did, then we chopped them down instantly and forgot to grab any of the saplings. So currently, this is what we have for the house, and I don't have any more wood for it, so we came up with a plan. We figured our best plan was to sneak back to a little part of Pirate's Cove and grab a little bit of wood. If we can find that place again and get some more saplings as well as jungle wood, then we'd be set for the rest of our time here. And that's exactly what we did. We set out on an adventure to steal wood from a cove full of pirates. Upon our arrival at the island, we had to sneak past one of their guard boats. Thankfully, no one saw us and we were free to grab as much wood as we could. We didn't stay long, only enough to gather a few stacks each and a ton of saplings. We really didn't want to have to come back here and risk dying. Once we had everything we needed, we didn't even take a second glance and instantly headed home. We were not taking the risk of staying here longer than we needed to. Plus, now we've successfully escaped Pirate Cove twice. That has to be some kind of a record. Home sweet home, and the first thing I did was plant down a gigantic jungle tree. And in no time at all, that thing grew up big and strong, which means we now have plenty of wood to finish the house. Guilty went ahead and chopped it down while I stared at the leaves. I was making sure we were at least going to go even out of this thing, saplings wise. With this new acquisition of wood, I can finally take my time and build our house. I started by finishing up the pillars of the house, braving the sharks that could take my life in an instant just to make the house sturdy. The back end of the house I left open as a great area for us to fish from. And honestly, what's a back door gonna really do for us here? Maybe I could get guilty to walk this proverbial plank one day. I proceeded to work on the top frame of the house using stripped jungle wood to offset the disaster of a wood type. The hardest part of this build was easily the roof. The old eye patch makes lining things up a tad bit difficult, but I managed to make the roof fit the build and I'm proud. After that, the only thing left was the interior. Now we actually made this place look better than expected. We put up a ton of chests, a great sleeping quarters, and a bunk bed desk type area for crafting. Overall, it's a pretty good hideout while we gear up to take on Pirate's Cove. Speaking of gear, I'm still sitting in half iron, so I figured it was time to go mining. Soon enough, I stumbled into a mine shaft where I was able to find a ton of iron. I mean, it was laying everywhere. The walls, the ceiling, almost every single corner I turned, there was iron. Unfortunately, my diamond cow was lacking, even more so than your game. Boom, roasted. But hey, now I have enough iron to make full iron armor, so we should be good to go. After that, the story continued. It was a stormy night, and we were just getting our sea legs on when we looked outside. A ship from the cove had hunted us down and taken dock at our island. Yo, are you seeing this? See what? Oh, that. I can't believe they already found us. Well, what should we do? They have cannons. How are we going to fight them? Stay with me and use your shield to block the shots. Guilty and I broke onto the ship, drawing out some of the crew. We finished them off and instantly headed into the ship, being bombarded by guys with pistols. They chased us out and while using my shield, Guilty was able to save me. From there, we pushed inside and had to break some of the spawners for the crew. At one point, I came face to face with death when one of the pistol guys got me down to 1 HP while trying to break the spawner. Guilty thankfully came to my rescue and saved my life. After defeating the crew, we looted the ship. There were pistols, diamonds, and gold in one of the chests. The scariest part about being in this place, however, is that there's TNT everywhere. We don't know what this ship was transporting, but that is terrifying. 
Once we left the cargo ship, we thought it was over. We had taken out the band of merry men who were on the hunt for us. However, the knight had another surprise. Lightning struck the hull of the ship and ignited the TNT. Every single item on the ship was blown to pieces, causing us to lose all of the resources we could have gathered. We were starstruck with the loss of so much after a great victory. Now we'll have to find a new way to conquer Pirate's Cove. Day 22, we tested out one of the only things that survived the explosion, our pistols. We used them to take out crabs and even tested them on the menace of the water, Bruce. 20 days seemingly alone on the open ocean, we were able to finally take out the shark. We even now have his tooth, which I proudly displayed on our wall as our crowning achievement. I didn't misspell it, you did. Then we upgraded our small rafts to a better boat, one to slowly travel the waters in search for the resources needed to take back our rightful treasure. And the next couple of days were spent doing exactly that. We took to the high seas in search for anything to aid in our adventure. We did end up finding a huge island to explore. We were very cautious as upon stumbling onto this island, the boss bar, Captain Roger, appeared on screen. We found some sugarcane, which means enchants are on the table. Then we paraded around the village, not harming the local folk, but possibly stealing some goods. The market had some bullets, fish, and even a cutlass mold, which means we can craft up our own swords to compete with the vile pirates out there. Then we spotted a boat in a small harbor with a sail and a ton of room for both of us. That was a joy ride for sure. After that, we noticed a small path leading up one of the mountains. We found a cave opening. It was a bit spooky and menacing, but thought we could handle it. There was a chest surrounded by gold, a lost treasure. We found two abandoned Grandmaster Captain's hats. I put it on and now I am truly a pirate. But before I could do anything, a skeleton with TNT snuck up from behind that I had to take out. It looks like we disturbed this abandoned ground too much and we had to get out of there after all the skeletons started attacking us. If those things were scaring us off the island, there was no way we could take on Captain Roger in our current state, so we headed home. With our return home, we still had Captain Rogers in mind. We made our cutlasses and enchanted them with minor enchants. We knew it wasn't the best, but anything will help against this guy. Then we took it to the next step. Diamond armor. Guilty and I went mining for a few days to get full diamond. I was able to find diamonds pretty easily until my game crashed and I may have lost some footage. But at base, I did make and enchant some basic diamond armor. Oh yeah, this looks sick. Now, I believe it's time we take on Captain Rogers, our first step towards regaining our top spot. We journeyed to the mysterious island to face the music. We had no clue where he was, so we looked around a little bit until we saw a cave with some light emanating from below. Below we went, instantly being attacked by the infamous captain himself. Guilty was hit first and hard, so I stepped in using my shield to block his pistol shots and critting him with my sword in between his bullets. I was hit back while Guilty was being chased by a crab. Then I got him stunlocked in a corner and finished the job. He dropped some amazing loot. Diamonds, emerald, gold, and even a totem of undying. Yeah, that's an extra life. Then we looted the treasure room, reclaiming a bit of our wealth that was taken from us. Once that was done, we left the cave and accidentally started a raid. We don't get a break, do we? The raid actually spawned on the mountain, and we had to climb up there to hit them down for the kill. It didn't take near as long as I expected, because every single wave went up here and basically committed, um, something while falling down the hill. Once we had the raid conquered, we both had totems of undying, an extra life for each of us. These few days have been rough, but we made it through, and it's time to head home. Back at base, we wanted to set up a better farm. It's easier to rely on than fishing. We went and harvested dirt, first what we could from the island, then offshore. I was kind of terrified of the sharks, but I figured I could outlast the bleeding effect while rocking full diamond armor. Once I had harvested enough dirt, it was time to build the farms. We started by making a semi-round island so that all the water hydrated the crops. Then once I had the wheat farm completed, I set up the sugarcane farm to grow while we did other things so enchants wouldn't be that far off. Then we upgraded the island even further, starting by building a bridge to a separate section of said island. This was going to secure our resources for the future. I ended up making a perfect circular island, but you know what, it looks good. If you haven't guessed by now, this is going to be a tree farm. While I was building this place and gathering resources for it, Guilty was rebuilding his dock from the time that cargo ship kind of imploded. Once both projects were finished, the island was looking much better. More like a home, but still not pirate approved. Hey, I have a crazy idea. Oh no, what's that? What if we displayed all of our treasure? You know, showing off all of our spoils. That has to be one of the dumbest ideas I have ever heard. I like it. So, day 42, I went ahead and added a display for our treasure. No pirate island would have been complete without the addition of our shiny treasure. 
The display island I was creating was to show off our victory thus far in these 100 days. With this extremely childish build, we are probably a bigger target than ever, but let them come. We'll be ready. To prepare for that, I also built another portal that I hated. This thing took me so long to get right. You have no idea how many times I took this down and tried and tried again. I wanted to do this at an angle, but I never loved it. The only way I could ever love this thing was leaves. A ton, a ton of leaves. Eventually, after adding a grown mass of leaves all over this thing, I started to not hate it. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it. It actually does tie into the island pretty well for another portal, so I'm just gonna leave it like this. We'll use it later. To prepare for all the enchants that we're gonna be getting, we're gonna need levels and leather. The levels can obviously be done in the nether, but leather is gonna be a little bit harder to acquire. Not sure how far we'll have to travel to get it, but adventure is adventure. So Guilty and I set off to search the vast sea for some water moo-moos. Eventually, after singing ocean tunes to each other, we stumbled upon an island with a cow and quite possibly some very mean men aboard. I don't know if this cow was like Will Smith's dog and I am legend of them, but we ended up taking it from him. And while loading him onto the boat, we actually saw another cow on a smaller island a little bit away. We headed over there trying to get him on the boat as well, but apparently this is only a three player vessel. So we boated home with this one and would come back for the next later. Trapping the cow here on the tree island, we left to go get his mate. We returned to the small island and were very easily greeted by the cow jumping directly into our boat. It's like he wanted to be saved from this desolate wasteland. Hey, we've got wheat at home, we probably could have just tempted him with that. And now that we're finally home, we can breed them one after another in this small cage. Not the most humane, but what pirate is nowadays? After a long few days dealing with the cows, we actually drank the rum we found on one of the pirate ships out at sea. And if you haven't experienced drunk before, this is exactly it. We got nausea too and started swimming around in the ocean. It basically made no sense and I couldn't see a thing, but this was probably the most fun part of the entire 100 days, just being absolutely drunk on an island. It unfortunately wore off, but my head was still absolutely spinning while we headed to bed. Waking up after that drunken fiasco, we definitely had a hangover. Unfortunately, treasure waits for no man, so we had to get to our next task. While we wait for the sugar cane to grow and the cows to grow up to be full grown adults and drop leather, we have to get our level game up. I have a really decent bit of levels right now, but I could use more if I'm going to enchant multiple items. So we hopped our ugly mugs directly into the nether portal to see what our spawn was. And let's just say it was actually terrible. We spawned in a basalt biome, of course, and then looking for quartz was an absolute nightmare. Once we would mine one layer, we'd have to go up to another elevated platform to find the next, constantly causing us trouble finding that very next vein of quartz. Leveling up wasn't getting any easier. The longer we spent in here, the harder it was to raise our levels because, well, that's how XP works. Eventually, I was able to leave the nether with over 52 levels, securing plenty of enchants for the future. Don't worry, Guilty was also way above 30, so we had no problem enchanting our gear together. To get those enchants, we spent a few days tidying up the island and breeding the cows so we could make the bookcases. We may also have run into a few sharks along the way. These things bite really hard for absolutely no reason. Apparently, hitting through blocks is their literal specialty. Thankfully, they never targeted the cows, so once we had enough, we were able to harvest them for leather. We made the bookcases and had a plan for the enchantment table. We have all of these trees over here growing for absolutely nothing other than wood gathering, and I figure we already have enough of that for now. So transforming this area out into a style of a treehouse is probably our next move. We used two of the trees on the right side to make a semi put together decent looking treehouse with a ladder all the way up to the top. It wasn't one of my brightest builds, but let's be honest, it was only for the enchantment table, so it didn't have to be perfect. Once that was finished, we placed it down at the top and got much, much better enchants than we had previously. My pirate's hat was given prop 4 on the first go, but I went ahead and removed it so I could get Unbreaking 3, Protection 3, which in my mind is a little bit better. And then going down the list, my chest plate had prop 4 on Breaking 3, then my leggings with prop 3 on Breaking 3, and my boots finishing off with Blast Protection. I don't really like that, but it had Unbreaking 3, so I kept it. With some serious loot backing our plays, it's time that we headed on to our next journey. On the mysterious island in that cave, Guilty actually found a map to a ship in the middle of the ocean. With our totems, our swords, and all of our armor, I figured that we could take on this boat right here, right now. I grabbed the map, and Guilty was the driver. 
I gave him the directions the best I could, but have you ever tried to give someone directions and you don't know where you're going in the first place? You've never looked ahead and you figured out that you gotta go left in four miles? Yeah, it was a bit like that. However, Guilty was able to make sense of my gibberish and land us at the ship. As soon as we caught wind of where we were, we realized that this was Blackbeard's old ship, taken over by Pirate Albrecht, his second in command. We're about to go up against one of the toughest pirates and his crew ever known to the Seven Seas. We broke into the ship as sneaky as possible, trying not to alert the crew, but I was instantly targeted by a guy with a cannon. I panicked and blocked up. That means they now know we're here. He attacked Guilty first and I was able to take him out while he was distracted. Then I thought it would be better to try and break him from the bottom to get rid of the spawners inside. Trying to go under, they actually realized I was there much faster than I thought and all jumped after me. It got a few away from Guilty however and we were able to go in from a different side. I walked up to the top and started fighting all of the guys with swords. It was an intense battle and the entire time I was getting shot in the back by a few guys with pistols. Come on, grab a sword and be a man. However, I was able to take all of them out and break the spawner. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take care of the sword guys yet and I had to go back for them, breaking their spawner and continuing throughout the ship without getting killed within an instant. I broke into the bottom, probably one of the worst mistakes I had ever made in my life and was targeted by three men with a cannon. I broke out and swam away almost instantly. I broke in for a second attempt and got one of the spawners. Then it was just us versus a ton of cannoners. I tried to go in from the bottom one more time and all of them rushed after me and I was bombarded, getting shot away from the ship extremely far. I swam back and started farming them in this hole trying to get rid of one by one. Then instead of taking all of it by brute force, I decided to use the bow and kill one of the guards. The last guy was hardest to kill. He was using water against both of us and I was hit down extremely low while trying to get to him. Thankfully, Guilty hit him right into me and I was able to kill him for the final hit. The only person we haven't seen the entire time is the captain. So before leaving our lives in the hands of this captain and a battle ahead, we decided to loot all of the gold from their chests. Then when we started our search for the captain, we found a map of Pirate's Cove. We can use this to get there easily. On the other side of the ship, there was a captain's quarters. I broke in from the roof to see if I could see the captain. However, we were lit on fire through the floor. This guy was not messing around. We started poking our head through the floor, trying to get as many hits on him as possible. However, he had bombs and they did a ton of damage. With his health being lower than ever, Guilty dropped down and instantly started attacking him. I jumped in for the rescue, trying to save Guilty's life while sustaining massive damage myself. Thankfully, we dealt the final blow on this captain and we were able to secure ourselves this ship. We looted the captain's quarters and realized why he guarded it so intently. Each chest had a 7 C's cutlass, which is so much better than the swords we're already rocking. This can give us slight abilities close to Poseidon and make it easier for us to travel amongst the sea. It also does way more damage as a bonus. From there, we also got a few extra stuff from this raid, but honestly, that was the coolest part. We left the ship knowing that one day we would come back and use this to conquer Pirate's Cove. We were boating home in a thunderstorm when something seemed a bit off. And I was right, because we had stumbled our way into a kraken. This thing was terrorizing the ocean as well as chasing us home. We did our best to boat away, not knowing if we could kill it. With that in mind, we figured our best chance was to just head directly for it. This was it, our only shot! Ow, my head. What the heck? Where am I? I don't recognize this place. Did we get separated? What happened to Guilty? Wait, what's over here? Wait, what are they doing? Is that... Is that my stuff? What's going on? Oh, shoot! I didn't mean to disturb you! Okay, I think I outran him. What the heck is going on? Wait, is that... Am I on Pirate's Cove? Somehow, the Kraken had whisked me away from Guilty and stranded me on Pirate's Cove. The only thought in my mind now was survival. I went ahead, broke a tree, and got my starter tools yet again. I didn't think I'd be doing this once more. This island stay was gonna be rough. I started searching to see if there was anything I could loot. Unfortunately, luck was not on my side and there was no barren house I could take over. Instead, the sun decided to go down and I mined myself out a cave for the night. It was the best I could do in short-term circumstances. Not being hunted down the previous night meant I was free to explore the island to see if I could get my gear back. I ran back the exact way I came, now armed with a sword ready for a fight. Circled back to the beachfront, I actually stumbled upon a little house I might be able to use. Yeah, this'll work, but loot first. 
To my surprise, I stumbled down to the beach and there was no one here. And there was no loot. All of the gear that had washed up on shore was completely gone, most likely taken by the pirates. Looks like I'll be surviving here alone until I can get all my stuff back. That meant getting a better supply of food. Currently living off of crab meat from the island isn't going to be enough. So instead, I figured it'd be a better venture fishing. I could not only get food, but possibly some extra loot along the way. I spent the entire day fishing, getting food item after food item. By the end of it, I probably had enough food to sustain me for the rest of the 100 days. After that, gear was my main focus. I already had food, but my armor is terrible, aka nothing. If I'm ever going to get the loot that I washed up with back from whoever's on this island, I'm going to need better armor. So I went mining for full iron. Every single vein of iron and coal I came across of, I would mine, because I knew I would need it later. I'm about to go up against an entire island full of pirates. Yeah, I'm definitely getting as much iron armor as I can. Once I was done, making it home was an absolute disaster. I tried walking the path and every single mob tried to kill me. If this is a test for what it's going to be like fighting these pirates, I don't know if I'll win. The very next day, I figured my best bet was to scout the island. If I was ever going to get any of my stuff back, I was going to need to know the layout of where I was headed. I cautiously made my way over to the camp and started making mental notes of where everything was. I think I was even able to spot where my loot was going to be. Unfortunately, it is way too light outside for me to try this. I'm going to have to do this in the cover of dark. The only question I still have is, where is all of the treasure hidden? They've done really well hiding that, but I have another task in hand. Alright, I think I have everything I need. Don't question the diamond hoe. The only thing I still need is a water bucket, and then it's time to head out for my loot. Alright, I've snuck my way onto the camp, but Captain Agmire is here. If I end up running into him, I'm pretty sure it's all over. I saw a few guys with guns and I knew I had to go ultimate sneak mode. I headed to the shore so I could get the low ground. I made my way to the back of one of the taverns to see if I could get my loot from there. The only thing I was able to do was break one of the spawners and draw in some of the pirates. It wasn't long before I realized that there was actually a chest directly above me. As soon as I opened it up, it was all of my loot. I started switching out the gear that I'm currently rocking to everything that's in there. This was it. Time to grab my treasure and get the absolute heck off this island. At this point, I had only killed a few of the crew, and I still think I can sneak out of here. I tried to bolt out of there, but as soon as I did, I was ambushed, and then I ran into the captain. I jumped onto one of the roofs and just tried to evade all of their shots. I ran into the jungle as fast as I could, knowing that if I wasn't able to escape now, I never would. The worst part is that they now know I'm on the island, so I'm probably going to have a hunting party looking for the house I'm staying in. Eventually, though, I did make it home and was able to sleep the night away. As soon as I woke up, something seemed off. There was actually a pirate right outside my door waiting to ambush me. I ran down the path as fast as I could, not knowing where I could go. And that's when I saw Guilty in the distance with a boat. I was being absolutely destroyed with every single bullet being launched into the water. I swam to Guilty and hopped aboard. What a sight for sore eyes this man was. He had virtually just saved my life without even seeing me for the past 10 days. <sighs> I can't wait to get home. Ah, uh, being home sweet home, I can finally organize this weird inventory I've been rocking. Guilty went ahead and added a treasure island, as well as I made a map of Pirate's Cove. Now that I've been there and was able to study the landscape, I now know almost exactly every single thing on this map. And we now know how to get back there, which means taking it over shouldn't be an issue. Honestly, I'm just glad to be home with Guilty by my side. It was rough being alone for those few days. Unfortunately, our time spent home was cut extremely short, realizing that we're going to need netherite armor for this Kraken. Heading into the nether, we both found a spot that would be great for netherite mining. We took down below into the depths of the Minecraft hellscape, looking for the single best ore in this entire game. Remember my diamond luck and how it was extremely good right off the bat? Well, it was the exact same with netherite. I was able to find a lot of veins of this, especially in a timely fashion. Guilty, however, was kind of left in the dust after I kept finding vein after vein after vein. We only needed 12 and that didn't actually take me too long to find. However, Guilty was stuck in the dust. I decided to keep mining to help him collect all of the pieces he would need. And I also may have gotten a little bit extra just in case I wanted to make a netherite hoe just for the bands. After we were done netherite mining, it was time to go home and make the best armor possible. Oh yeah, I'm looking pretty good. With this new acquisition of gear, it was time to head out to find the Kraken, our first victim. However, the last time we fought a battle like this, we ended up stranded on separate corners of the ocean. Let's just say our fear meter was through the roof. 
But no matter how many times I'm quaking in my boost, this beast can't hide from us forever and we have to defeat it. As soon as we found him in the deep ocean, he instantly started chasing us. Thankfully, brain cells don't run in his family and he attached himself to our boat instead of attacking us. I hopped in the boat with him and started doing some serious damage, but not without taking some of my own. With our sea cutlasses in hand, we took him on two on one and were able to defeat the Kraken of the Seven Seas. I feel like someone was watching over us for that one. After that crazy journey, our boat couldn't have been in a worse condition. We figured the best idea for us was to build a better boat if we were going to take on Pirate's Cove. We scrounged up all the materials for a jungle war galley, and putting this down, it looks so much cooler than our other boat. I definitely think I could go to war in this thing. With that done, we had one special thing to do after killing the Kraken. The reward for that glorious kill is actually its tentacles and you can use that to craft sushi. Not knowing if it was gonna be good or not, we attempted the process. We each had around six sushi each, and we tried to eat one while on the island, and I'm pretty sure we got every status effect possible. Everything that's gonna help you in battle came out of a singular piece of sushi. Now, I love sushi in real life, but who knew in-game it was gonna be amazing too? This is gonna come in super handy when we have to face the pirate captain, Agmir, at Pirate's Cove. And that was the next thing to do on our list. We used the map to find the direct route to Pirate's Cove, so it wouldn't take us too long. Once we got there, the only thing between us and the riches of the world was Pirate Captain Agmer. We docked the boat at basically where we had started our adventure. We then slowly made our way up the island. I have this place mapped out in my head, but I still have to lead the way for Guilty. There were a few slight ambushes along the way, but nothing we couldn't handle. The only thing we were here for was our treasure, and when we spotted Agmer, we knew he was the only one who had the location of it. We headed over to him to finish the job of taking out every pirate captain who wronged us. Every single hit, he dropped gold and treasure. This man was an absolute pile of loot. While using our amazing swords abilities, flying around and killing this guy, he could barely land a hit. We had surpassed all of the power levels of every single captain in these 100 days. As soon as he was down and out for the count, we got another totem of undying, and the only thing left is to search for our treasure. There was only one place on the entire island I haven't searched, and that was the volcano. On our way up the staircase, we even found a hidden cave with some gold inside. This was the first good sign. Our next sign was the fact that there was a giant X in the middle of the volcano. As every pirate knows, X marks the spot. Once Guilty and I were there together, we mined through and there was a giant pit. We fell probably a hundred plus blocks down, but thankfully there was water from the moisture in the cave. We had found it, all of Pirate Cove's treasure. We took out the sharks guarding all of our loot and then looked around. There was more gold than you could count on all of your fingers and toes. There was emeralds, diamonds, iron, you name it. Every single thing was down here. We even adventured up to a top layer where we were able to find a few extra netherite ingots. This was a pirate's dream, so we decided to gather up every single material in here, leaving it all dry. Okay, so maybe not all of this was ours, but now that we have it, we're definitely stealing it. Once we were out of the middle of the volcano, the cove's treasure room, we had felt like the most accomplished pirates known to man. We just did what no other pirate before us could do. We took on every captain that betrayed us and stole our loot previously. We defeated the dreaded Kraken, haunting the seven seas. And we built an incredible island that we were able to survive on for these 100 days. However, there's one more thing left to do. After that insane adventure, this valuable reward was enough to make us go crazy. We are now the richest pirates amongst the water. To show off the treasure, we figured the best way to do that, other than to add it to our island stash, was to turn one of our trees completely gold. Yep, we turned one of the trees gold. We climbed up to the tree house and started changing the leaves colors to gold. By the end, you could really tell how rich we pirates are. Let us know down below what your favorite thing that we accomplished was. Personally, I think surviving after the Kraken split us up was probably the toughest challenge yet. And if you enjoyed more, make sure to hit that like button down below, as well as subscribe to the channel for more. And don't forget to download Monster Legends, link down below in the description. You don't want to miss out on 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster Kaori. Honestly, anything with a sword is pretty lit to me. 
I also have a new merch store, so go check that out down below in the description. There's some pretty fire stuff, and it's not all Minecraft based, so it's pretty much for everybody. Anyway, I hope you have a great rest of your day. I know a few of you are stressing for finals, but don't worry, you've got it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.